G'day folks, uh, Jim here from Orchard Forex. It's Thursday the uh, 16th of July. Uh, I thought I'd put out a, a midweek uh, video. There's a cu couple of interesting developments in the market I think that are, are worth watching so uh, I thought I'd uh, record those. Uh, and there's also a little bit on the calendar today. We've got the uh, Australian jobs numbers uh, due in a couple of hours. Uh, that'll be closely followed by the Chinese uh, GDP and then uh, later on in the day we get to see uh, ECB meeting and the uh, US retail sales. So we'll, we'll have a look at a couple of those charts. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, a silver chart. And here we have a, a weekly chart of uh, silver. Actually, I'm going to go out to the monthlies. Uh, as you can see, we've for several years now, really, we're, we're best end of eight, 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 nine years, we've been traveling sideways in this range, in this channel. But right now, um, we, we do look as though we're, we're about to make a move to the top side. Uh, we've, uh, as you can see, the pink line here is the 200 month moving average. The blue line is the 100 month moving average. We've managed to squeeze above both of those, and we're now against the uh, top uh, top side of the channel. And, and look uh, look to have the momentum to be able to break higher, possibly for a move uh, to, to uh, 20 and beyond. Um, as you can see, we've uh, we have broken the top side here. So uh, the momentum, the weekly momentum, is looking higher. The monthlies weren't showing us an awful lot, um, but the dailies uh, also uh, point higher. Uh, I haven't got the channel drawn on the dailies because it goes back so far, but the, the, the uh, dailies do point higher. So I think uh, it might be quite a trade to uh, to be on. I think your stop loss now probably. Uh, well, back below 1925 is is the breakout area, and as long as we stay really above 19, I think now um, we uh, we're probably going to head higher. So I'd, I'd probably put a stop loss around uh, so 18, well, probably about at around 18 and three quarters, possibly back back below this 76.4 percent FIBO level, uh, which is at uh, around 1890. So uh, I think the risk reward is quite good. Um, the target, I guess, the initial target would be here, which is from 1966, which we're not too far from. And then we go back here to the 2016 high. Uh, where is that? That's at around uh, 2113. So uh, I think there's potential scope to the upside there. Keep something to, worth, to be worth watching anyway. Uh, while we're here, I might have a quick look at oil. Okay, here we've got a daily chart of uh, West Texas Intermediate. Um, although the uh, indicators are pointing lower, really they seem to be un just unwinding uh, from having become overbought. And we've had this sideways consolidation for the best end of a month now below uh, below this key resistance area, which I pointed out before in previous videos. And uh, I think uh, eventually I think we're going to push into this resistance area and, and head up possibly towards uh, 50. Uh, the 40 to 43 area is uh, is pretty solid though, um, as I can show you on the weekly charts. Now you can see from this weekly chart, we had this massive head and shoulders uh, where with the neckline just running straight through here, it's a, for, around 43. Uh, that allowed the massive sell-off that we saw in, saw in oil a couple of months ago where it uh, actually traded down into negative territory. It's bounced back well. The uh, weekly uh, indicators point higher. So I think once this um, uh, consolidation is done with, we eventually push through 43. Once, as and when we get above that, uh, then I think we, we can push on. It's probably going to be a slow move uh, and it, it's going to uh, move in line with stock markets and uh, risk sentiment. But uh, I do think uh, if we do, as long as we see uh, potential for increased demand globally, uh, oil will, will push, uh, push on higher. Um, let's move along to uh, copper. So here we've got a monthly copper chart, and this is looking pretty uh, positive to me. Um, we go back to 2010 here to to this this previous high uh, and the descending trend uh, resistance. Now we're we're in the process of breaking above that. The momentum isn't strong, so uh, I think we need to be a little bit careful. But if we if we can make a monthly close above uh, this level and then if we can get above three which is uh, basically where the 38.2 uh, FIBO level comes in, 296. Uh, if we can get above there and, and stay above there then uh, I think uh, there's uh, plenty of upside potential for copper. That would obviously have to come in line with uh, increased demand. Co copper's uh, known as uh, 
as a barometer of economic strength. So really at the moment whether you know whether we do make a break or not uh, remains uh, it's somewhat uncertain because as, as, until this resistance is overcome uh, it, uh, it, it's a little bit messy but if we do if we can break above three then I think we, we can go a fair bit higher uh, and that should uh, that should help underpin um, the Australian dollar as well so uh, that's uh, that's something to keep an eye on but um, while the monthly indicators are not showing us a great deal of momentum at the moment if we go back to the weeklies, they uh, they look pretty positive. The uh, stochastics are slightly uh, they're, they're rather overbought. So maybe we do need uh, a little bit of consolidation here to allow those to unwind. But uh, the momentum does seem higher. The daily charts, uh, well, they, they they may be topping out just for the moment, and we we may be, we may get some consolidation around here. But uh, overall, I still like it higher. Um, and keeping up uh, an eye on the uh, iron ore price as well, which uh, remains well underpinned because of Chinese demand. So uh, I think uh, that's that's trading well above 100. It's about 110 today. I think 110 dollars a ton. So uh, if that uh, continues, that's going to have a flow through effect onto copper, uh, and we should see a push higher. Uh, if we move along to the currencies, there's a couple of interesting uh, things to point out. Uh, this is uh, the U.S. dollar against the uh, offshore Chinese yuan. Now uh, this is a weekly chart, and it does look as though we're uh, in the process of breaking this uh, uptrend which goes back to 2017 uh, we're sitting right on FIBO support here at sort of 684 uh, and we're sitting in line with these previous tops back here so this this should be pretty good support if we do break it though uh, we can move down to this 100 day uh, big part 100 week moving average uh, where's that 694 and below there is the, these lows uh, and the FIBO support and uh, 200 week moving average around the 680, 682 level it would be the target. The, the weekly charts are pointing lower, and we've got this bearish uh, divergence uh, that uh, that's long term bearish divergence too. So uh, I do suspect that uh, trading the dollar from the short side there is possibly the way to go, and we're going to see uh, further strength in the uh, Chinese uh, currency. Uh, elsewhere, we've got a couple of uh, interesting developments. Uh, I very rarely trade the Swiss franc these days uh, from Australia, but uh, uh, it ha has. Uh, Euro this is Euro Swiss. This is a daily chart, and it has had a couple of notable days moving uh, the cross moving higher uh, back towards the 108. Um, and the uh, the indicators are suggesting that we could possibly see further strength. Uh, now, this is not uh, anything ma majorly significant at this point in time, but uh, the Swiss franc can be. Uh, uh, a, a leading indicator of what might be happening down the track. So if we if we continue to see Swiss weakness, uh, that could uh, turn into some further Euro well Euro Swiss heading higher. But it could also feed through to dollar Swiss, which I'll go and have a, a quick look at uh, in a second. But uh, that may, this may uh, be an early signal of some dollar strength. Doesn't really look that way to me on the uh, dollar index charts. That the dollar looks uh, heavy still. Uh, and the euro looks as though that uh, could uh, still outperform, but uh, just just worth keeping an eye on this if uh, if it does if it breaks this or one o one o eight fifty level where is that yeah one o eight fifty sixty takes out this high here so one o nine ten fifteen uh, then we we could be away to the races and and up up towards the one one ten and possibly higher so just worth keeping an eye on there uh, elsewhere and the currencies. Uh, I'll just take a quick look at Dollar Swiss, which is quite interesting because that's made a bullish uh, outside uh, reversal of the downtrend uh, on Wednesday, uh, and we're just sitting above this um, this descending trend line here. The indicators are not showing us an awful lot, but the uh, the, the bullish outside day could be uh, signaling further dollar strength. Uh, the four-hour charts possibly pointing high. You, you could almost buy Dollar Swiss here, I think. Uh, and probably just keep a stop loss. Uh, whereas this coming through 90, uh, 94.30, so I'd probably keep a, a stop loss. I don't know, maybe maybe just below 94 the figure uh, to give yourself a bit of breathing space, or, or 94 and a quarter, 94.20 for more conservative traders. But it does look to me as though we we could head a little bit higher. Uh, initially targeting this sort of 94.85, and then probably these highs up around here. Where's that 95.30? So it's just something to uh, keep an eye out for. Have a quick look at the euro while we're here. The euro got up to a high of uh, 114 and a half last night. Uh, it's come a lot off a little bit since um, and is consolidating. 
Uh, the uh, ECB meet tonight, and we've got the. Um, they're, they're not going to change rates or anything, but uh, Christine Lagarde is probably going to uh, ask for for more uh, government assistance uh, because of the pandemic. Um, and then to, uh, there's a leaders EC, EU leaders meeting on Friday, and I think Saturday. So watch out for headlines for that. Um, but uh, I th the euro is uh, is looking okay because uh, it's, it, it appears to be in a better state than the, the uh, US uh, is handling the uh, pandemic at the moment. So I think uh, the euro, although the, the hourlies are pointing lower, and so are the four hourlies are sort of slightly lower, it looks still to be a buy on dips though. As long as we hold this uh, rising trend line, which is just above 113, uh, we're, now, we're just above 114 at the moment, I think uh, I think we're probably uh, allowed to go higher still. So uh, buying dips, as I say, for the time being, looks uh, to be the way of it. Uh, the four-hour charts, as I say, are not showing us an awful lot, possibly uh, uh, some further consolidation. But the dailies are looking more positive. If we do take out this 114.5 level, uh, 114.95 uh, back here, and, and then above there, we can really, uh, there's not an awful lot to stop us going up towards here. This is just a 116 a figure. It's still a long way off at the moment. But uh, it does look, at, look to me as though uh, we, we are going to, we're going to test this uh, level uh, just to see what's there. Uh, below Back below 113, then I think all bets are off and, and we can probably sort of drift back towards this sort of 112 uh, area, 111 and three quarters where uh, we, we were there or a couple of weeks ago. We've got the Aussie jobs numbers coming out in a minute. The Aussie looks okay. Uh, this is a four hour chart. Uh, it does look okay. It's uh, trading at 70 cents at the moment, uh, which kind of seems inflated given uh, where uh, where Victoria and New South Wales potentially stand in terms of the coronavirus. But uh, US dollar weakness is allowing the Aussie to, to push on hard, as is the iron ore price, as I say, which is uh, trading at $110 a tonne. So uh, uh, that, that's underpinning the Aussie. And uh, the four hour charts, not showing us a lot, an awful lot, but possibly slightly positive. Uh, and the dailies equally are not showing us a lot. Perhaps we, uh, we, the, the unemployment numbers will uh, be the uh, direction, as, as well as the uh, Chinese GDP, which comes out about an hour later. So we'll have to watch that. Personally, I do like to uh, to sell the Aussie, uh, but with, with a pretty tight stop loss above this uh, 70, uh, 65 area. So uh, it, that might be a trade to be on for the next uh, uh, next two or three hours. But uh, beyond 70.65, then uh, I think we uh, we probably do head higher, albeit not. Uh, it's going to be a slow, slow, slow grind. Um, where 71 the figure, and then this uh, 61.8 level at 71.24.25. Uh, that uh, appears to be the uh, the next major resistance. Um, that's probably about it for now. Um, we'll li we'll leave it there today. If there's anything. Uh, Major happens. I'll um, I'll be back with another video uh, tomorrow. Until then, uh, we'll probably we'll, we'll be doing a weekly video on uh, Sunday, uh, ready for a trade opening on Monday. So uh, we'll talk to you then.